In this video, we'll be comparing the 110 and 120 millimeter lenses on the GFX system. It's going to be a bit of a technical video, less of an artistic video like the last one. And before we begin, I just want to say thanks for all the support on the last video. Um, primarily, I do photography, uh, studio, and street. So that GFX 100S review was really my first kind of big video project. So I really appreciate all the love. Um, if you do like these videos, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. I'm going to have some more content, both GFX and X-Series coming out in the next couple months that I think you'll also enjoy. All right, on to the video. Um, back in May, Fujifilm North America was cool enough to lend me the, one, the GFX 100S along with the 110 and 120mm lenses. I picked these lenses specifically because I do intend on buying a GFX pretty soon and I wanted to see if the 120 millimeter was a necessary purchase. Um, I know before I even tried, before I even tried the GFX system, I knew the 110 was gonna be a phenomenal lens, um, but I didn't know if it would work well in the studio, at least compared to the 120 millimeter. I've noticed that in various Fujifilm Facebook groups that the 120 definitely does not get a lot of love. Um, it's a it's very close in focal length to the 110 and It's hard to justify owning both when they are a bit pricey. All right, so first let's talk about the specs um, The 120 millimeter is an f4 lens and it has 0.5 max magnification It has a minimum focal distance of 45 centimeters, which is about 17.7 inches the 110 millimeter is an f2 lens and it has a 0.16 max magnification but its minimum focal distance is about 90 centimeters or 35 inches. My primary studio lens is the XF 80 millimeter macro lens. It has a 25 centimeter or a tap about a 10 inch minimum focal distance. And it's a true one-to-one -one macro lens. So in terms of studio use, it's a bit disappointing that the 120 millimeter is almost double the minimum focal distance. Um, however, it's nothing too extreme. It's definitely workable. But with the 110 millimeter, minimum focal distance is absolutely massive. Um, definitely, you're gonna hit some roadblocks with the studio environment, especially if you're doing really small items, like maybe a couple inches. If you wanna stop the video here, that's my conclusion. If you're gonna shoot small items, you definitely need a macro lens in the studio. Unless you, you, you could probably work with the 110 uh, millimeter lens if you're on the GFX 100 or 100S, but realistically you would be better served with a lens with a pretty small minimum focal distance, especially because you want to capture your subject um, relatively large in the frame. And even outside of the studio, um, I, when I did have the camera, I primarily had the 110 on probably 95% of the time when I was on the street. However, when I was in the Botanic Gardens shooting flowers, um, the 120 was definitely necessary to get close up to the flowers. Um, you could crop with the 100S, but it, it really kind of is not a super fun lens to use when you want to get close up because you, you just can't. The minimum focal distance is massive. All right, so now let's jump into Lightroom and get into some comparisons. Okay, so for this first comparison, we're going to look at this uh, spool of thread that I set up. Um, it's not the most exciting subject, but it is very detailed and small. It's probably less than two inches tall. So what I did here is I put the GFX 100S on a tripod with the 110 millimeter, and I basically set it up to be as close to the subject as possible. And this is kind of the, the level that the, uh, the size that this thread will fill the screen. So basically we're going to look through what I did was I took a picture at each aperture for the 110 and then I just left the tripod and camera in the same spot and I put the 120 millimeter on um, just to kind of get a comparison. So let's take a quick look at just go through the different apertures. We'll punch in to probably about 66%. All right. So at F2, um, we're at 66%. Again, this is most likely, um, closer than you would look at this product, like if it was on a website um, for a product shop. But um, but yeah, decently sharp. You have some nice bokeh on the sides. Um, if we keep going, F2.8, F4, F5.6, we start to see the sides getting a bit crisper. 
um, f8 looking pretty sharp like we zoom out just to uh, just to double check we're basically at 33 percent I think this is really as large as this this thread would ever be if it was a product shot um, and the whole image looks decently sharp so yeah let's keep going f8 f11 start to see it get slightly softer as we increase the aperture f16 a little more soft 22 all right and then if we look at the 120 millimeter um obviously we're starting at f4 5.6, f8, f11, 16, we start to see the image get a bit softer, 22 as well, and 32 is pretty soft. So let's just compare uh, the first images on both. So we're looking at f2 on the 110 and f4 on the 120. So if we click to about 66%, um, we can see that obviously due to being at f4 more of this thread is in focus um, you do have nice bokeh on the sides but that doesn't matter because it's a product shot so let's just compare an f4 to an f4 so strict technically speaking um, if we zoom out to about 33 percent both these images pretty sharp um, it looks like the 110 is actually a little bit sharper um, throughout more of the subject. Um, I'm not sure, I, I'm not a lens expert. I'm not sure if that's because on the 110 we've already dialed in past the, the um, smallest aperture. And on the 120 we are at the, the first, uh, the, you know, the smallest aperture you can be at. But either way, um, both images pretty nice. Let's go to F8. Um, here we can see pretty much each image looks identical. These, these, I didn't really edit these. This is pretty much out of the camera. Um, so the 120 is a little bit lighter, but that doesn't have to do with any sort of quality difference. Um, you can see here that the 120, uh, the product in the 120 is slightly larger. However, you know, that's due to the larger focal length. But overall, I think realistically, if you, if you had either shot, you know, you would be pretty fine um, with this type of image. Um, I don't think you could go wrong with either lens. Um, just strictly speaking, this, the image of a uh, product of this size. So next, what I did was I did this, I repeated the same thing, but I put the 120 millimeter on the camera and I moved it to as the, the minimum focal distance of this lens. So if we click and we zoom in, I mean, now you can start to get some insane resolution. Um, this is absolutely nuts. Um, little GFX 100S magic here, but it's pretty crazy how we zoom in so far that this thread starts to look like yarn. Um, but yeah, also interesting how we get the same kind of a similar uh, bokeh outlining the edges since it's backlit. Um, but yeah, if we keep keep going up, f8, f11, f16, f22, f32. Obviously, f32 is slightly soft. Um, at this level, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, we're not zooming in. It's definitely soft if you zoom in, but also the whole thing is pretty much in focus. So if you had like a cheap client um, and you wanted to just, you know, not do any stacking or anything, just blast the camera up to 32 uh, quality, thrown out the window and uh, job done. But I think um, what would be interesting is if we compare, if we compare F4 on the uh, 110, the original shot and F4 on the, the second view, here you'll see why the 120 is necessary. So if we just zoom in a bit, we're at 66%. Um, and 
without a doubt, um, you know, this is why you would want the 120. Um, this is a spool of thread. You don't really need to zoom in. Maybe if you were photographing a ring or um, some antique coins or something like that, you know, you'd want to see some crazy detail. The 120 is where it's at. Um, you definitely get substantially more detail because you can just simply get closer to the product. Um, you know, here's where, it, you know, the 120 would definitely serve as a lens that you can just keep at your studio and, you know, or maybe even bring it around if you want to go do some flowers or something close up in the real world. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think this is where if you want to be able to zoom in like this, um, you know, here's your, your main comparison. The 120 um, would definitely serve you well in this instance. Okay, so I have one more studio example, but let's break it up with this, um, this picture of a flower I took when I was at the Botanic Gardens. So, um, let's see. So just to keep with the same format, we have the 110 on the left and the 120 on the right. So basically for this flower, um, a bit less technical than the way I shot the thread. Um, what I did was I stood in one spot. Um, clearly I took the 120 first. Um, so I had the 120 in my camera, aimed at the flower, took the picture, stood in the same spot, swapped the lenses, and then retook the photo with the 110. So more or less the, I was in the exact, the almost exact same spot. Um, and this kind of serves as a nice example where, um, I wanted to compare the backgrounds. So I shot the 110 at F2 and I shot the 120 at F4. So basically, um, I mean, more or less you're, you're really nitpicking at this point. Um, the, the background separation was very, very large. Um, so, you know, both backgrounds are very smooth, but we, these are both expensive lenses and we are nitpicking. So I think it's safe to say that the 110 background is substantially smoother than the 120. So if we zoom in, um, maybe at like 25%, you know, you, there were people, um, people in the background, basically, you can start to see a uh, little, um, you know, darker shadows and whatnot um, on the 120, but on the 110, basically the lens just rendered everything super smooth. Um, and if we zoom back out, you can see the bokeh in the uh, 110 is much larger and smoother, um, not smoother, but just larger than the 120. Um, but let's take a look at the sharpness in the flower. Um, we zoom in 50%. Um, again, this was taken with the GFX 100S. So if we were looking at the center of the flower, um, I mean, pretty sharp on both. It almost, um, it was definitely a little breezy. So you could see like maybe the flower moves slightly. Um, but you know, like the tip of the flower is pretty sharp. Um, Actually, it's a little sharper on the 110, but I'm not going to, I'm going to factor that due to wind. Um, obviously more of the flower is sharper on the 120 due to being shot at F4. Um, if we look at the very edge of the flower, um, they look pretty similar, but the 120 is definitely a bit sharper. Um, same thing as we come down, the 120 just has more overall sharpness than the 110. And of course the 120 is a bit larger. Um, the stem kind of looks the same on both, um, slightly different, different background due to probably different positioning. Um, the flower at the bottom, obviously it's a little bit smoother, I think on the, the 110, but more or less they're pretty similar. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really think you can go wrong with either lens. Um, the 110 is definitely, I would, if I had to pick one, I would choose the 110. Um, you know, if you're going to go for super, super hyper smooth background, you might as well have the king. But yeah, decently similar results um, in this situation, shooting a subject um, with a 
decently long lens and a big drop, uh, background drop off, you're going to have similar results with most longer lenses. All right, so the last studio example is going to be a product shoot I did with um, some squat shoes. So right before I got the GFX 100S, I bought a pair of Reebok Legacy 2s. Um, basically, without getting into it, squat shoes are shoes you wear um, when you're doing barbell squats or Olympic lifts. Um, and basically, I wanted to incorporate an element from the gym as well. Um, I came up with chalk. So chalk, you basically put on your hands um, to kind of grip the bar better um, and also to avoid like slipping. So not to go off another tangent, but one of the coolest parts of this product shoot um, was using the GFX 100S because instead, basically what I did was I composed the scene. Um, I, I stacked the two shoes up, I rigged them in the air, um, and then I basically just set the camera up in the exact final composition I wanted. Um, and this is completely different to how I would shoot with, the, um, with my X-H1 and my 80 millimeter. Um, I would basically fill the frame of the camera with the top shoe as large as possible and then re-adjust re the tripod and shoot the bottom shoe. Um, so it was a really cool process um, to be able to just not have to do that um, because with the GFX 100S it would be overkill anyway and you know just have to basically worry about the composition versus you know trying to rig it up so that with a crop frame so that you have enough megapixels to pull off the shoot with the high quality results. All right so this is what I was basically talking about. Um, as you can see this is not cropped at all. Um, this is basically the exact scene. So all I did was worry about rigging it up um, and then you know composing the actual shot what it's actually going to look like. So naturally I spent the time um, setting this up and just simply set the camera to the, the exact position I wanted it to be in. And then I just simply worried about focus stacking. Um, so even without, with just clicking into zoom at 100%, I mean, you have detail for days, maybe even years, decades, um, just a massive amount. One, one interesting thing about this lens, the 120, is that um, I thought the drop off was a little extreme. Um, I don't, I think if I shot this with my X-H1 and the 80, it would definitely not be as extreme. I think the image would be a bit more compressed. Um, you know, this is a pretty interesting drop off, um, but not a problem, just kind of an observation. So, um, you know, this is just a, a crop. You see, it's just a, a crop of, uh, I'm not sure why Lightroom is glitching out like this, but it's just a crop of into the top shoe. Um, super sharp. You see all the nice little dust and glue and whatnot. Um, so all I did was I focus stacked the top shoe and then I focus stacked the bottom shoe. Um, the detail you get here is really, really awesome. Um, and yeah, so let's look at the final image. So this is the final image here. As you can see, everything is focus stacked really nice. Um, I added the chalk element, um, which was also shot with the 120 mil. Um, the bottom, the bottom uh, pattern in the bottom of the shoe was very fun to focus stack. Um, I do all my focus stacking manually for the most part. Um, I'm not a big fan of, I, of course you have to align the images in Photoshop, but uh, Photoshop does a really bad job of automatically doing it. I find it's faster to just do it manually. Um, but yeah, tons of detail, super, super, super sharp. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think um, it's not to say I was super close with this lens to the shoes, um, minimum focal distance wise. I think I could have shot this with the 110. I think I could have even shot this with the, um, my X-H1 and the 80 um, and got a, pretty much the same result without the resolution. But I'm super happy with this. I think that um, you know, the 120 is an absolutely killer lens. Um, it's very sharp. And this resolution, just as a testament to the GFX 100S, is that at 300, 
pixels per inch, you're basically at 30 by 37. So super, super, super massive. Um, but basically almost 9,000 pixels by uh, 11,000 pixels wide. So, so yeah. I hope this review was helpful, kind of shed some positive light on the 120 millimeter. Um, I know it's a bit pricey and close to focal length of the 110, but it definitely has its purpose. Um, I know I'm going to definitely be picking up the 120 in addition to the 110. Um, the 120 I could see just living at the studio. The 110 will both basically be um, fixed to my camera outside of the studio. Unless I'm going for a wide shot, um, which I'm definitely going to look into the 23 millimeter and maybe the 45 millimeter. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of bokeh and background separation. So I don't really foresee me using the 120 too much outside of the studio. I did give some really good examples of of um, bokeh and background separation for the 120 in my previous review of the one GFX 100S. So definitely check that out if you're interested to uh, see that. Another point we didn't really talk about too much. Um, obviously the 120 has a minimum aperture of f4. So that kind of comes into play as well. Um, in, com in coming from a crop frame sensor, I don't think the XH1 handles ISO very well, um, bumping up your ISO. So I pretty much always shoot at the lowest ISO possible, around 200. So, you know, for me, um, you know, if I'm shooting at night, I would definitely want to have the 110, um, the F2, and it's lower than F2 if you factor in the crop factor. Um, you know, that's going to give you some crazy low light performance. Whereas, you know, the F4, while it is lower than that, technically, um, still going to be a bit, uh, you're going to definitely have to find decently lit areas in order to use it at night. If you found this review helpful, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to have more content coming up, hopefully a bit more frequent as well. Um, hit the like button and also um, let me know your thoughts. Um, did you like this format? It's a bit different than the last format. Um, do you, would you rather see uh, more final images or do you like the Lightroom um, examples? You, would, you, would you rather see a bit more of a fusion of the two? Um, let me know your thoughts. Are you going to pick up a 120 millimeter? Um, do you think it, it's not for you? Um, I'm happy. I always respond to my comments below. So let me know your thoughts. Um, and with that, I'll catch you in the next one.